And there's a look at Eric Molina, very confident again when we talked to him yesterday. And uh, a lot of that confidence comes from working with Oliver McCall. Interesting story, Barry, how we got how we got connected with McCall. They sparred together. And McCall, of course, has been fighting forever, and he's winding down his career. So he said this is an opportunity to train a good young heavyweight. Yeah, he said he's got a couple of guys that he really likes. Molina lost his very first professional fight. And he learned from that. Since then, he actually has gotten better and better. And one thing that's a given, he's got a very good right hand. Well, that's going to be his uh, big weapon tonight because he's a big, tall guy with a long reach. The bad news for him, Ariola has a very, very solid chin. Yeah, so it is a good news, bad news kind of thing. And he is taking a giant step forward tonight. And he was he was only a cruiserweight only a year and a half ago, so the heavyweight division is relatively new to him. And he didn't start boxing until he was 21 or 22 years old, so uh, not unlike a lot of heavyweights. So it's, this is all new to him. Well, we'll see how he reacts to the moment, and it is a big moment for him. I think he'll have some crowd support here. They call him the drummer boy because he said he kept finding quarters with drummer boy on him and he found one the day before he got the call for this fight. the nightmare you got the drummer boy against the nightmare Chris Ariola fought on November 5th he stopped Rafael Butler says now he takes every fight as serious business and he's in a situation where he really has to sure it does I find it interesting that the uh, the mariachi band played for Molina and now Ariola comes in who wants to be the first Mexican American heavyweight champion he's holding an American flag not wearing the Mexican colors interesting yeah and he was talking to us about his fight in Leon and he said they just adopted him so much, the Mexican people there. He said he was absolutely shocked by it. He didn't think they'd know who he was. And he said he couldn't go anywhere without drawing a crowd. Well, he's a high energy guy. He's, he's certainly the highest rated American heavyweight. And because the Klitschko's have been so dominant for so long, it's almost as if round two is coming and everyone's getting a second chance. And now Ariola will get his second chance, perhaps, but he has to uh, obviously win and probably look pretty good doing it tonight. Yeah, and the operable word is perhaps, I think. I mean, he is in there against a pretty tough guy. At least we know he's got a good right hand. Now there's some flaws there, and we'll see if Ariola might not be able to do something about that and take advantage of those flaws, which we'll talk about. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the numbers here, Steve. Well, as is always the case with Chris Ariola, it's all about the weight. 245 tonight. He's been around 235, 240 in his recent bouts, but he looks to be in uh, very good shape to the naked eye. Yeah, he really does. He's taking this fight very seriously. He says he has to take every fight seriously. He says that was not always the case with him. And Molina really looks upon this as a real opportunity, and he's in a win-win situation. With that, we'll take you once more to the center of the ring and the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy. All right, fans, here we go. This bout coming your way, scheduled 12 rounds of boxing. It is brought to you by Goose and Tudor Promotions in association with Don King Productions and Corona. Introducing to you, this bout is sanctioned by the WBC President Jose Suleiman. Supervisor is Robert Lendhart. Our judges scoring from ringside, we have Javier Alvarez, Mike Mitchell, and Jesse Reyes. Our third man to the ring, our referee in charge of the action, John Shorley. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in our heavyweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Rio Grande Valley, Texas. He weighed in at 228 pounds with a record of 18 wins, one loss, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the WBC United States heavyweight champion, ranked number 11 in the world by the WBC. Introducing Eric, drummer boy Molina. Across 
the ring on my right fighting out of the red corner in this 12 round title attraction wearing blue trunks with white trim fighting out of riverside california he weighed in at 245 pounds with a record of 33 wins two losses and one no decision he has 29 big wins coming by way of knockout he is the former world title challenger currently ranks the wbc number one heavyweight in the world ladies and gentlemen introducing chris the nightmare Once again, a referee in charge, John Shorley, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Okay, fellas, this is for the WBC title. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Let's get ready to rumble, baby. So with that, we are set to go with our show extreme main event of the evening still of course two more hours of boxing coming your way on championship showtime boxing gus johnson al bernstein antonio tarba there to tell you all about that a look at chris Ariola, and he says i'm all business here and he best be against this guy who i expect is going to try to come out quickly yeah i think we're going to know just what Molina is all about uh after about two minutes of this first round. He's got a good right hand, but he does have a tendency to lean into an opponent. If he does that against Ariola, he could have a problem. Well, he better stay off the ropes. That, that, that's a little free advice from me right now from Molina. I'm sure he appreciates it. His weapon is his right hand. He's dropped lesser opponents with that right hand. And Barry, I was watching Oliver McCall during the introductions. He was pacing. He wants a piece of Ariola. I think he does. He was warmer than Molina also. Yeah. That's exactly as you said, where Molina does not want to be. Body shot from Molina. The crowd's going to react to Molina. Chopping right hand missed. He also has a tendency to leave his left hand out there. Well, that right hand, Molina has to let that right hand go because right now Ariola's walking through him, getting inside way too easy. It's a great jab from Ariola. Right hand of the body by Molina. Ariola has become a very patient fighter. And a guy clearly has gotten better as he's gone along. Quite honestly, first time I saw Chris Ariola, I didn't think he had a chance to be a champion. And my opinion has changed greatly. Well, he definitely has the mentality of a fighter. That much we know. Maybe the biggest problem he has right now is that the division is dominated by two guys who are rather tough to beat. There is that. Wow. And as we said, Molina is nothing if not a tough guy. Crank that right hand. And I think he's got Ariola's attention here. Ariola was definitely hurt big time by that punch. He stumbled on his feet. Now, now he's in control. And he's dropped for the right hand by Ariola. Little bit of overconfidence, perhaps. And I don't know. Seven, eight, nine, Not going to make it. It's over. Just like that. You pay the piper, I guess, huh? I guess the worst thing Molina did was land a big right hand because as soon as he did, I mean, within seconds, Ariola was all over him, landed a big left hook, pushed him back, and then when Molina went down, clearly I think he thought to himself, I don't, I'm not going to win this fight, and I don't belong here. That's what that, that <laughs> exactly. was. Exactly. Looked like he was trying to crawl out of the ring underneath the bottom rope. Wow. Happened quickly.
Well, it's a very different Chris Ariola, and he's a much more complete package than when he first started out. He's gotten better and better. Had a very unfortunate fight against Vladimir Klitschko. Looks for that other chance against his brother, against Vit Vitaly Klitschko. I think your party looks for more of a chance against Vladimir. Well, he, he certainly did what he needed to do tonight. Here's another look at it, Steve, and uh, the right hand from Molina was, well, there's the right hand that hurt him. Yeah, right to the temple, right to the ear. And Molina right here looks like he's lost in a, in a, in a blizzard. That right hand goes over his head. And look how easily Ariola pushed him to the ropes to set him up for that right hand. Yeah. That was a big right hand. And I don't know, I, I just, watching live after you see this knockdown, I just got the impression that Molina, uh, maybe he was hurt. I don't know how badly hurt, but he looked more discouraged than hurt. As if I landed my biggest shot, now I'm on the floor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What's left? Yeah. I think that left hand actually, really set the whole thing up. The right hand was the one that dropped him for good, but I think he was hurt with that left hand too. And we'll take you right now back up the center of the ring, Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it all official. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 30 seconds in round number one. Our referee in charge, John Shorley, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout, Chris the Nightmare Areola. Not much doubt about it. So Areola will take that belt with the jelly beans and everything. Chris, congratulations to, to you. It seemed as though he tagged you one time there with the right hand and that woke you up. Yeah, did, actually, was that, is that what happened? He did hit me with the right hand, man. Everybody in Texas should be proud of him, man. He's a strong fighter. Very strong. He came with the right hand and I was waiting for that right hand. And honestly, it did wake me up. So I had to get him with one of my right hands on my own. And when you did come to your senses after that right hand, it didn't seem like there was much left in him after you tagged him with the left. No, you know what, you know what it is, man? I like getting hit, and once I get hit, I know the fight's on. I got hit, I said, oh shit, time to work. So that's what happened, I got back to Why do you like getting hit? Um, you know what? I guess because my dad hit me a lot, so. <laughs> when, when my dad hit me, that's when I knew how to fight, so. That's why I fought hard this fight. You said, coming into the fight, that you're probably in the best shape of your life. Does this feel different to you now, now that you have your body in shape? Of course it feels different now. When I go in the gym with, with Henry, now it's about boxing. It's not a fat camp anymore. It's not about losing weight. It's about working on my craft, and uh, it's short today. You also said that probably for the first time you're taking every fight seriously now as you go forward. What changed your whole mental approach? Honestly, it wasn't even the loss to Thomas Adamick. It was a fight after that when I fought uh, Manny Casada. I went 12 rounds with him. He busted me up. I had a black eye, broke my hand in a fight that shouldn't have lasted no longer than this one. And... Um, I learned my lesson, and here I am now. Now, a Klitschko, you've had a loss to one of the Klitschko brothers. Now you'll get the other one. Do you feel as though you'll be ready for that? Of course. Of course I'll be ready, man. The best part about it, this is a blessing in disguise, man. He's a tough fighter, man, and, and uh, I had to be aware at all times. As you've seen him with that right hand, and uh, it, it did, uh, it did get, give me my, my spaghetti legs. What will you have to do to win that fight? Work, 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 and give him a lot of pressure, but smart pressure, moving my head, hitting his arms, hit everything I can, man. Chris, we look forward to it. Congratulations. Thank you. A hey, big shout out to everybody in Riverside. And um, as a kid, I always wanted to meet Don King. But now I think Don King's a fucking asshole and he's a hey, racist. No, 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 no. We're not going down that way. He's racist. All right, Barry, it was all going well until then. Let's apologize to the audience. We can't control these guys. That's totally uncalled for. One second, Mike. Right, Mike. Absolutely, Jim, uh, and sorry that end like that, but uh, let's take nothing away from the performance. I mean, he went out there and he did what he had to do, and uh, maybe go back a couple interview lessons. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? Uh, he's been consistently entertaining as an interviewee, but uh, after scoring a very nice, impressive knockout.